he assured me, oh, we don't have to fake anything. It's legit. It's on the up and up. But, you know, I kind of just wasn't interested. So, you know, every few months he'd send me a message. We'd talk. He'd share videos with me. And I started watching their work. And I was like, wow, these guys are really good. They know what they're doing. Um, the, the, the approach they had was excellent. So fast forward to, you know, modern time now. And uh, he messaged me again not too long ago. And he's like, you know, I know you didn't really want to do it, but, you know, if you give it another thought, I think we could really do something special here about helping spirits to cross over because both him, his team, and myself have been experimenting for two or three years now on um, helping spirits cross over into the light because the one message that I get a lot, that Josh gets a lot, a lot of people get is the help me or help us. And there's times where, I can record for 10 minutes and I'll record 20 help me messages. So I would start asking, what do you need help with? And they would never answer. As you know, sometimes you can't get the answers that you really want. (laughs) Exactly. Um, It's almost like there's like things they can talk about and things they can't talk about. It's really bizarre. But eventually I got a couple replies talking about they needed help with heaven or finding the light. So I went out and I, I looked for books on this subject, um, And I found a couple things, and I read them, and I started to experiment with techniques. And when I started doing this, I remember the first or second time I tried it, um, there was a spirit uh, named Billy who would always come through. And over several sessions, it it, it took that many for me to realize he was saying he was a child and so that he wanted help to cross over. So I did this experimentation, and... Other spirits were thanking me for sending him home, as they said, and they said it worked, you know. But then, like, a couple months later, I kept getting Billy coming back through. Now, was it the same Billy? I don't know. But uh, it was fascinating that this could even be possible. I mean, even if there was, like, a 5% chance that this was real and working, to me, that was enough to make it worth it to to try because I I could imagine if I was a, a lost soul who, for some reason or another, didn't cross over. And there's many theories on that, whether that's they chose to stay so they can be with their loved ones or they were afraid to go into the light because they didn't want to be judged or they just missed the chance. So there's a lot of theories. Uh, There are also theories of these are criminals and bad people and they're not supposed to cross over. But if I was one of these good people and I got stuck somehow, I would, you know, I would be one of those saying, help me. If I all of a sudden heard a voice or saw somebody that could talk to me and hear me, I'd be asking for help too. So I decided to to basically try to do this. And most of the time I do this, I don't publish uh, the videos. I have a bunch of stuff I've never published. Um, Some of it's pretty fascinating. Um, So Josh, back to the whole paranormal thing, we're like, let's focus this documentary on something nobody's really done that we've ever seen, and it's helping spirits cross over. Instead of going out looking for demons, we'll go out and try to find these spirits who are looking for help and try to use these techniques we've been trying to perfect to send them, you know, into the light. And um, so we went out, I flew out to to Palm Beach, and I did uh, some work with them, and we got along really well. Uh, Him and his team are amazing people. They're really good people. And uh, we hung out for two or three days, and we filmed a little promo for Kickstarter. And we put the Kickstarter campaign up, and as of today, there's only a week to go. It doesn't appear it's going to be funded um, because we did have a pretty lofty goal because we were using, like, big time film crew, editors, you know, all all kinds. It was like the real deal. It was going to be for theaters and he already has connections to, to get that done. So we do have the Kickstarter up with seven days to go. Um, And like I said, I really doubt it's going to get funded, but I was just talking with Josh yesterday. And even if it doesn't get funded, we're going to do something. It might not be on uh, that big of a scale like we were planning, but we're still going to get together and create a little documentary on, um, on what we were just talking about, helping the cross spirits over. And we hope to um, do some pretty groundbreaking stuff in there, have some ideas. So, but if anybody does want to check out the Kickstarter, we don't get any of the funds unless the project is funded. So if it doesn't reach its goal, nobody gets charged or nobody loses their money. We don't get it. Um, at that point, then we will just have to go out of pocket to do a smaller thing. But I'm all willing to do that because, as I said, I think it's very important. It's a passion of mine. It's a passion of theirs. And I think it's just a good thing. And I think once people start seeing this happening, um, and if we can get verification of it happening, 
I think that would just be incredible and it would change a lot of people's views on some of this. So that's basically the, uh, that in a nutshell, uh, basically it, it's, it's a pretty cool project. Yeah, it is. And, and with the stuff that, you know, I mean, you know, the same old stuff on TV is, is getting to be kind of irritating. Um, yeah. and so that's why, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it because that's what I learned from that. That's what mm-hmm. got me going, Oh my God, I've got, to oh, yeah, this is too. so cool. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm not knocking any of those, but some of them are just, they need to be different. And, you know, your, y'all's idea is completely different. My idea mm-hmm. is completely different. You yeah. know, it, it is hard. And I know, because let me just say that I, we had to do a Kickstarter and we just started off with a thousand dollars. And yeah. we did our, you know, our um, first episode at Sloth, and the the amazing uh, evidence that we captured there, um, yeah, using, that. That was, that was oh fun. my God, it was just nuts. And then, yes. you know, we we've done a couple of things, and that, you know, we the guys edited it and did it really yeah. quickly. And normally it takes a long time, so we had a lot of things, and we sure. did show that at Tombstone and at, you know, in Jefferson. So we could get feedback and say, you know, hey, y'all need to do that and maybe do this because all that input, constructive criticism, let me say, Mm -hmm. is very helpful. Um, And so now we're to the point with our project to where we're waiting for approval from an investor that was interested in the project. So maybe that can happen with yours too. And I'm hoping that you guys get funded because – but it's kind of like you do have to see – you do have to see what they're getting, you know what I'm saying, before they yes. invest sometimes. Sometimes exactly. it's really hard for they're skeptical about projects, you know. Um, yes, I know. But this project, I mean, my God, when I was watching the video, and, and I have a person on my team that, that she specializes. She actually lives in Oklahoma, but she uh, is a part of Spirit Dallas, and she helps spirits cross over. And at first I was like, how, now, how are you going to do that? You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Cause, <laughs> now, how does that exactly work? Because, um, yeah, I don't get it. But she, we were at Tyler, and there was a, a female spirit there that was, I don't know if she was just stuck or, you know, like I said, like you were saying, we don't really know, yeah, we don't know the yeah. actual reason why. But it was like when, when we walked into the room, it was really heavy. Uh, you could feel the sadness. Of course, yeah. I could and the fear of coming in and mm-hmm. her not knowing any of those people. And then all of a sudden when my, when my teammate came up there and she started doing talking to her and trying to help her and saying, I was just like, what? And then you could feel the room lift this huge, like, like lifting the veil. It was just like, Ooh. Yeah. and, and it was just the, the room got lighter and the, the, whole atmosphere changed and i was like that's amazing what that just happened because yeah. <laughs> you wow. can feel it you know that's amazing um that happens with me a lot too where you like you just described you walk in and you feel that heaviness that thickness you feel it and you sense it and then um like you just said you know it just felt lighter and it's just like a whole shift that happens it's it's really bizarre but it's real i mean it happens and that's it's all not. unexplainable to us, but, you know, it's fascinating. So I think that's one of the things that drives us to do it. Like, you know, what's going on? You know, because as, as humans, we always want answers about things. And I don't think we'll ever get the answers of what exactly happens when we die. But, you know, we can get a little bit closer. We know that there's something out there um, for sure. Um, Definitely. You know, that's the, <laughs> we've learned that. So. That's for sure, and we've learned that a lot of them are willing to communicate if if they just were being you know able to be heard, and that's yes. that's where all your apps and and all this comes in to to take it to the next level. And when I was when I was friend of my uh, the, the production guys and uh, my film crew about you know how Spirit Quest coming, I mean you know what's it looking like? We heard anything? No news is good news. That's cool. But then mm-hmm. I said, well, then you need to tell them to watch the videos that I just posted because I just took Spirit Quest to a whole new level. So go on and <laughs> go on because that portal, I, I treat it like a baby. I treat it like my baby. I'm like, I got to get a whole new case for it and everything. But I'm like, <laughs> don't touch it. Don't get near it. 
Um, you know, I got all the things yeah. set correctly, leave it be, and um, awesome. I will take that sucker everywhere. Um, I've been asked to demonstrate it at Gulf Coast Paracon in Biloxi uh, oh, in September. So cool. Yeah, so I'm like, well, I hope I can do it justice. <laughs> oh, you can, you can. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the videos, I mean, there are so many of, of the fear fans that are saying, oh, my God, I've been a fan of Steve Huff and, and Huff Paranormal, and I watch all his videos and what amazing evidence and, <laughs> and you know, all that. And I just can't uh, I just can't believe some of the stuff that you get. Um, I know. I, I can't believe half of it. Sometimes myself, I'm like, what? And I'll run into but, the other room, and I'll tell Debbie, you have to hear this. You know, I'm so excited. Because when you get that um, – you know, when you're doing the evidence review and, and those times where I'll record a session and I'll be like, I don't think I got that much, you know, and then I'll play it back. I'll put on my headphones and I'll listen and I'll be like, what the hell is going on? I didn't hear that in real time. And it's it's just like some of the most crazy stuff. And then I get so excited, so excited and, you know, and um, it's just, I guess, part of it, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you do as well. Um, oh, yeah. But it's so it's so cool. I mean, just to know that you're, you know, we can't say 100% who or what we're talking with, but just the fact that we are definitely communicating with something we cannot see, but some something of intelligence, something that says they're ghosts and spirits, you know, something that talks back to us, something that seems to relate to us and relate to things that they used to have. You know, I, I get many times they're talking about that they miss uh, food or chocolate or coffee um, smoking, things like that. So it, all the evidence leads to that these are ghosts and spirits, um, which is just amazing. <laughs> so Well, yeah, and the things that they talk about, too, you know, it's so funny because they they do miss different things. And, you know, I have mm-hmm. a, I have a, a family member that lost her husband, and, you know, uh, we were going to get a reading, and she was nervous about it because she was afraid that when he came through – he would be angry. And I said, honey, if he gets a chance to come and talk to you, I really doubt yeah, that he's going exactly. to waste that, that opportunity to mm-hmm. to be angry of any kind. He's probably going to say, I love you. I miss you. Something yes, of that exactly. nature. But I doubt very seriously that he's going to come through the one chance he gets <laughs> and go, what the hell is wrong with you? You know what I mean? So yeah, I, know. I, I really don't think that's the case. But some people do get afraid of contacting the other side, you know, just like they do with the Ouija board, you know, and oh, yeah. and things like that. And it's about educating yourself. And that's mm-hmm. that's kind of why I'm so glad you're here on the show because people do get afraid. Um, like some of my friends will, <laughs> like I have one real friend that I've had for like years and years and years, and her dad's a preacher, and she, she texts me and she goes, girl what are you doing you are talking to spirits and i'm like that's exactly what i'm doing and she goes that's scary why do you do that oh my god i'd be so afraid and i want to try to put those fears for people kind of to the side and and let them know that not all spirits i know they've watched a lot of probably movies and things like that Mm -hmm. but don't you find spirits a lot more i don't know loving and and willing to communicate instead of being ugly i do definitely there's you know i get that all the time as well like well i get the range i get the people who are too afraid to try it some people get afraid of watching the videos some people say i'm going to hell because you're not supposed to do that you know there's a whole range of emotions that people have on this subject but my experience is that 90 percent of the time maybe even a little more it's positive um they're respectful to me. Now, there are times that creepy things come through. And, you know, in the beginning, I got a little scared because it's your natural reaction when you're not used to doing this. But these days, if something negative comes through, I'm just like, I'll tell them, no, that's not true. Or, no, you're not going to do that. Or, you know, there was a time um, uh, when I was married before. Uh, and I'd say it was between, uh, when was it, 2000 and 2000 and or there was a period between those years where when I would sleep at night, either I would wake up or, or my ex-wife at the time would wake up because the bed was shaking. Now, I'm not talking exorcist shaking. I'm talking like a slow, rhythmic rocking. And usually she would wake up and she'd be like, why is the bed shaking? 
And this was a time when I wasn't active in paranormal. You know, I wasn't actively in it. Um, though I was doing EVPs here and there uh, when we'd go like to Queen Mary. I would do some EVPs for fun. Uh, 